So morning all, you join me at a, a, a chilly but quite mild at the same time, uh, all soaked down this morning. So I've come simple feeder tactics like I normally do. Uh, I've come on the other side at lake to what I normally fish. Normally I fish on car park side, which is over there. This time I'm on what I know as the house bank. So the owners of the lake actually live in the house behind me there. So um, yeah, I'm on a peg I've not fished before, but where I'm actually fishing, it's probably the same sort of place as where I normally chuck to when I'm over that side. In summer, all this is all lily beds um, and thick ones as well. So easiest way to get round it is to look on Google Earth, see where pads are in summer. Luckily, Google Earth captures a, a image of it in summer. And then you can sort of guide where you where you're going to be chucking to so you can use a like a far peg as a reference point uh, or a far tree which i'm doing it's just between a tree and quite a popular peg at car park so i'm going to be chucking to the middle of there i'm the only person at lake apart from a carp angler on the island for people that know it is a little island um i've seen him have two carp just while i've been setting up so that's a bonus but i've come for skimmers come for the silvers some roach um so Let's get stuck in. today I've got a intense intensity 720 um, all my intensity 720s I just find it convenient for size I don't like having odd small reel where I can um, that means I've got plenty more spools that will fit every reel uh, and line and line or braid depending on what the rules are uh, baby distance master I've got the 3.8 um, I've got 010 absolute braid um, some reflow power shot leader, which I think is eight pound, um, but it's better casting off that than it is off your braid. Um, and to start with, I'm just going to chuck out a few medium rockets. I normally do five, quite a mild day today, and normally it only has to warm up a couple of degrees here if it fish to really turn on. So I'm just going to stick to five of them for now. And then if I start getting bites or I get alterations in how quick and how slow they come in, then I'll put a couple more out. But play it safe to start with. Bait wise, uh, some maggots, some pinkies, and I've got two mixers this week. Um, I've got GG Green and I've got Skim and Bream Dark. Why I've got both and I've got an empty pot there, the idea is that I'll put five of them out. I'll see how my first hour or hour and a half goes. Um, if not much changes, I'll then put five of them out on the same line and then I will see how that goes. Before I then start making a mix, I will, before I start making a mix, I can then determine which one is going to be effective. But ma majority of the time, what ends up happening with these two mixes here is that I end up combining two into one pot and making one big mix. Um, but like always, I'm just going to put an handful of that in there. Um, like so, a couple of them. So I've got kilos and kilos behind me, so I can do plenty more. I've already got some maggots and casters in here, and that weren't on purpose, they fell in. Um, and then micros, just going to shove. Ooh, that didn't work out right. A couple of micros here, not many. So again, good thing about this place is that the bream and skimmers like to grub about. A couple of pinkies, not a lot. And then maggots, just a, a sprinkling, hardly anything. There's a couple of casters in there as well. So, And that's gonna be my entry mix for baiting up. Again, really low on particles. It means that on my first few casts, I've got a better chance of hooking up quicker and also it doesn't feed them off early uh, for them to move off because as we know as we know bream can be a bit temperamental with feed they can move over feed plenty of it and then they can quickly just drift off uh, feeder choice plenty of feeders it's normally window on here which i'll be going for It'll be a medium window and it'll be a cage window 
I've also got some tiny little um, solid feeders with the same weight on. So it means I can still hit that distance, but just put minimal feed in. It saves me dropping down to a bomb. So it's not a deep venue. It's about five foot where I'm fishing. But there's a lot of water around you and there's a lot of features on that lake as well we all lily pods where they before they come up in the summer so fish can move around them so i'm going to stick to them stopwatch imperative on here uh, knowing when your bites are and how quick they're coming that alone will tell you just how much feed you want to be taking in uh, that alone will tell you just how much feed you want to be putting in and when you want to be putting it in um, Plenty more different feeder options as well, I've got small cages, uh, bigger windows and I've got some solid windows as well. So might even go to them, but conditions today tell me that it might even be easy fishing today. So anyway, I'll chuck five of these out and uh, see how we get on. That's M5 in. Now, filling up the feeder, so it's cage feeder. I do use solids quite a lot. I'm gonna use a cage today. I've slopped up my mix a bit. I ain't done it too much, but what I wanna do is, because I'm using a cage, if I just go straight in with loose feed like that with live baits, I'm just gonna start crawling out straight away as I push some feed in. So, a little tip for you, if you like using windows, a caged one as well, not a solid, is go in with your thumb loader mix like that, and just line it, yeah? And then if you want to chuck a few loose offerings in like that, not too many. Again, your first bite can sometimes be your most difficult one. So you want to make sure there's just enough out there to get them there, but you don't want to absolutely blind them with loose feed, meaning that they bypass yours and you could be sat there 20 minutes waiting for a fish. And then just cap it off with feed. And that way you've not got all your live baits, maggots, pinkies, whatever, crawling out at back on cast. It just keeps them in that little bit longer. And... Um, it just held aids on cast as well. When that hits the surface, they're going to want to shoot straight out of there. So I want to bang that out now. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put the camera straight on my first chuck, see how long it takes to go by. And just to add as well, I've gone with a double pinky on hook. Again, that first bite can be quite difficult. So I'm going to go with nice easy baits to start with. And then it's normally double white on here that does all damage. So let's get this one chucked out. So if I put you guys down here, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to go out on that first cast while I've got you filming or while I've got it recording Let's see if the bites come as quick as what they normally do So, focus this one out Nicely so, I don't like to sit with my rod off at rest. Wait and sink your line. Wait to finesse all the adjustments. I like to get a live rig straight in there. So start at stopwatch. See how long it takes for that first one. Be careful, there's a lot of pike in here and like anywhere I go they like to disrupt to nice days fishing. Yeah. 
we got? Yeah, look, nice skimmer. Nine seconds or whatever it were. That was effective. That skimmer and bream dart mixes. Enough on camera to be able to see decent fish, a decent head of fish anyway, as many as I can. So far, we're only about half an hour into the session. And if things aren't quite going to plan, I wouldn't really worry about it as much this early on. But I'm getting a lot of line bites. And before I start changing hardware, software, if you like, I think I'm on a two foot hook length. And I think I need to be on probably about a 12 inch bat foot. So before I start changing any hardware, I'm going to start and change up bait. So I'm on, I've done double pinky, double red, double dead red. Um, and on this cast, um, I'm on double red on this cast. So I'm going to reel in and I'm going to put double white on and I might even put single white on start with and then put double white on. Before I start chopping and changing hardware I'm definitely going to try all my hook bait options because I don't want to be chopping up hook lengths if that's not the issue. So I need to narrow the issues down um, from simplest form first. So I'm going to go from hook bait to hook bait and then if that doesn't change there's plenty of fishing swim I'm, I'm getting indications now as i'm talking to you and if that doesn't change anything then i'll start and look at changing hardware so i'll drop down to a 12 inch up length might even go down to an 18 and then a 12 but we'll see how we go um i just think the fish aren't straying far enough away from loose feed and i am fishing on a button at the minute so i need to make sure that i am right in that feed zone so i'm reeling i'm gonna try i'm gonna try single white i'm gonna reel in try single white chuck back out and see if that makes a difference what i won't do is take my first if i get a bite within first 10 seconds 20 seconds i won't take that as right this is what i need to do i'll only use my second or third fish on that change um as any sort of success so i'm gonna re i'm still getting indications now as i'm talking to the camera so i'm gonna reel in single white maggot punch it back out and just see if that can make a difference first bite on the up bait but I'm up in there. I'm changing the up length. Try single white. Same single white maggot. Punch this out. Two minutes six. Minute 56. Already a better fish. Simple change, single white maggot. That's the result. One minute twenty nine, that one.
So that's the third fish on that change of software. And now what I'll do is I'll stick to that change and I'll only alter my software if bites pop again or change or whatever circumstance. one's on as well. It's 16 o'clock. Starting my shot leader now. So Keep doing what I'm doing. Single white maggot seems to be working. Normally a venue where double red absolutely takes over. It's awesome. Again, changing the software, going from double red, double pinky, single white. That's what we want. So, bonus skim on a good day, that. Even when I'm tightening up like this, I'm going to be watching for bites on the tip because they can come quite fast. doing this by the way that's when I'm seeing indications of there we go straight away look that was 21 seconds that one as easy as that nice and simple Got on Right, so that one's been out there um, just under 10 minutes. Uh, I'm still getting indications on tip, I'm still getting liners, but I'm, based on how many liners I'm getting, I'm getting quite a lot, so to every 10, I've just had one there. Oh, there we go. That I dropped back. It might even be, this happens to a lot of us where, oh. I'm going to lift into it. I was just about to say, this might even be them situations where you've not had a bite for 10 minutes and you lift up and you've got a little tiny roach on or a skimmer attached to it. So I'll lift up into it and, uh, and see if there's oats on it. Moving on it. There is. Feels like a small fish. That's exactly my point. Well, you've not had a bite for it's been nearly 10 minutes now. Not had a bite for that long. It might be that hook baits fell off or it's been buried. This time of year, when there's leaves everywhere, it could be that your hook bait, your maggot could have just crawled under a leaf. So, and those other, other situations are when there's a small roach on or a skimmer and it can be hooked, but it could still be feeding around your feed out sort of making any it's just movements on tip so it's a small skimmer anyway. that fish it could have been on for the best part of two or three minutes it just weren't showing any major indications on the tip so Bring back and chuck out and get another one. But because of that, I'm not going to change hardware or software. I'm going to keep it as it is. That could have just been a one off situation. That spot. Straight down and rest. Oh, 
Here we are. Five twenty nine, I've got that one. Oh, it's roach. Nice bonus roach, that one. I'll give you with that. Right it next. Again, just goes to show that being that bit more consistent and just being patient, it can pay off. But never ignore the fact that because you're not getting bites, there's no fish in your swim could be everything but the feeding fish that's the problem. Every time. Make sure you get on that clip every time. Also make sure that feed is landing in that same area. Every feed it, uh, building that swim up. And that one's on. Three minutes fifty-four. Oh, lovely! Absolutely pristine. Nice early fish as well on cast. Single white maggot. Doing everything the same. And these are results you get when you start chopping and changing too early on with the hardware. That's when it can have an impact on what you catch it. Right, so now it's time to do some more of my mix. So I've got my GG green there, which I haven't touched yet. So I've got plenty of this left. Again, I'm not here for an all day session. It's not a match. Just pleasuring on my own. Um, so I can show you guys simplicity here, how I tend to catch all these silvers. So this is my mix that I've been using. This is Revolution Bait Skimmer and Bream Dark. So I'm gonna chuck that in there. It's quite a wet mix. I wet it up quite well on here. It's a shallow venue, but they tend to like it. I th well, I, I tend to get a better response off it when it's like this anyway. So, put in there, there's a few loose offerings in here already. Pinkies, chuck a few of them in. Not really much going off with maggots. A couple of them in, and I mean it, you don't want a lot. Micros, sprinkle some of them in. I'm a big fan of micros in ground bait for skimmers because it keeps them grubbing about for ages. And that is just a nice slack mix. We have nothing there to bring them in. Grubbing about for all these loose offerings, but it's not absolutely full of maggots, casters, chopworm, everything. To the point where it will keep the fish too occupied for those pockets of feeding, um, for those pockets of feeding sessions that they have, that they can then come in, take what they want, and drift off, leaving my hook bait less chance of being picked up. That's my theory. It works wonders. Um, and I, I won't be changing it until sort of your fish tell you to. But let's get back in, get some more. And what I'll do is, just for a quick early charge, like I say, with there not being many loose offerings in there, I'm going to show you what I showed you before. Just line my window feeder like that. Nice and easy. A couple of pinkies. Cap it off like that. That way, they're not all crawling out at the back of a cage window. And I keep as many in there as I can for when it hits bottom. All right, let's get this one out and catch some more. Clip. Straight down to your rest. Well, 54 seconds, I think it were. Spot on. Okay, Mike. Back in for another one. So, absolutely spot on. Spot on. Five minute five. Lovely skimmer, everything's still working fine, so we'll keep carrying on as, can't carry on as we are. Never forget your essentials either. Different, small white maggot, very small one. Wind to feed a full, same mix. We'll jump straight back out. 
ね、食品ね。どうSeven seconds that one. Easy fishing. So, my shot leader, like most, the length of my rod and then a rod again. As it's coming down now, look, you just see it here, it's just going onto my reel, that's me not. As soon as I get that on my reel, I know I've got another rod length of shot leader out. So, if I lift my rod up, look, it brings my fish straight up. And I haven't got to do any more turning. in the handle as well. When you are lifting your fish up, it can come up quite far out. Netting them that bit quicker, it just, it just secures them that bit, bit faster. Here's another good one, look. Absolutely stunning fish. So again, really easy. Get them going, keep them there, not overfeeding. Window feeder, uh, medium window feeder, even. And it resulted with them. Absolutely stunning. Box on. Straight down on your rest. But three minutes in, still getting plenty of line bites, so I know that still plenty of fish in this wind. Four minutes twenty-six. Not leaders on my reel. If I can get my net ready. Chuck him in there. That's another one. Get him. I think he's even got a bit of an instant win in him. Hey mate. Instant win. Him straight back. Get another one. Ten minute mark. So I'm reel it in now. Um, just do a fresh cast. So again, I'm happy to assume probably a buried up bait. Probably a buried up bait under some debris or leaves on bottom. So um, we'll have a recap. Back out to the spot. The clip. So that's my ten minute mark. We'll pull this one in and uh, get the change software to start with. I'm thinking I want to use GG Green. Come back in. Feeder. Small inch hook length. Back to a single Y. So always return back to what we're working before. So this is what I mean by altering my hardware. So I've gone back to a single Y, which we know works. Um, I've changed my hook length from a 24 inch down to a 12 inch. Uh, same feeder, same hook, same everything, just a different length hook length. Um, so I'm going to put my mix in there as normal, and I'm just going to cast out, and my only difference is the length of my hook length. I believe there's still a lot of fish in my in my swim, um, and they're just not straying out far enough uh, from the feed towards the hook bait. So I'm going to try that, see if that makes a difference. Rest. 
Go on! Move it! But this is Georgia just come down to see me. Oh. Result of that one. It's about seven and a half minutes for it off at cast, so but still fishing swim. I'm gonna carry on doing what I'm doing. Nice short tuck length. As before, I can chop and change where I need to, so that time was on double red. So double red maggot on hook. And see a maggot and caster. Leader. That's off with some mix. Waving my good lady and daughter. Every time they come down. There 15 minutes, and I'll leave it while they stood there. And as soon as they're gone, tip goes round. Six minutes, the one. So, still fishing area. Important thing is, they're still feeding, it means you mix. All your software is working absolutely fine. There we go. Definitely a bonus fish that one. So we're going to wait a little bit longer for him, but that might be the new average that we're looking for to buy. So, get him back in and get straight back out for another one. Perfect every time, it's what you all look for. Not really, if you don't really do much feeder fishing, then I advise that when you do get out, you don't have a bad day fishing. kind of fishing on these venues very simple to use and cheap and tackle that's another one that was probably a not probably a 10 second fish that one as of now just gonna straight down to my rest Better fish as well, that one. That one. What you want? when it comes to waiting games and uh, I can't get another one. There we go. Got a mouthful but eleven fifty five. On a 10 minute cast, I only started getting indications at the 8 9 minute mark. I'll leave it out for an extra minute, even 5 minutes or so. 55. I'll come in on that 2 minute mark. So the fish lost that one.
Baits, uh, skimmer and bream dark. Drop down to a 12 inch hook length. Uh, when bite started to slow down, that made a massive difference. Same for software and hardware. Always change your software first. Hook bait, zinc toys, because obviously you're changing to see the size, weight, um, design, hook length. Always, always make all correct changes first. And that's the difference between catching a few fish. And absolutely bagging up. So I'll end it there and I'll see you on the next one. Right. That video, my microphone is a bit rubbish. I don't know what it is, but it just sounds terrible. But ending on that fish, I've actually stayed for a few hours after and caught loads more. But I did a bit of a live on social and showing a few people some fish and quite interesting. But anyone that's new to subscribing to the channel, I feel like I'm doing it for an all different purpose now. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And give some love, give some support. Don't really do it like this. Not in my comfort zone doing it. But there's something quite soothing about connecting with angling world, what I've learned today. So um yeah. Bream Revolution Baits. If you haven't got any already, get some. Skimmer and Bream Dark and GG Green are in a league of their own. Brilliant ground baits. I've sworn by some amazing baits over the years, but those are for Skimmer and Bream fishing and silvers, next level. Awesome stuff. And yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.